Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Just like American culture, American cellular towers are having tremendous influence worldwide, and particularly in Europe. We discuss the Americanization of European towers. Overall, the United States has 157,000 towers, with a 2.3 times tenancy ratio, equating to 360,000 tenants with their equipment on towers. Whereas Europe has 360,000 towers with a 1.4 times tenancy ratio, equating to 500,000 tenants with equipment on its towers. Therefore, the United States and Europe tower markets are two of the largest globally, only behind China, India, and Japan. However, the key difference between the United States and Europe markets is that in the United States, the independent tower companies serve a much more important role than in Europe. In the United States, the largest wireless carriers like Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile have historically depended on leasing space on towers from independent tower companies to deploy their communications equipment. Specifically, these independent tower companies include American Tower, Crown Castle, SBA Communications, and Vertical Bridge. In the United States, 95% of the country's 157,000 towers are owned by these independent tower companies. Whereas in Europe, the independent tower ownership has been only 20% of the country's 360,000 towers. Indeed, Celnex Telecom is the most notable independent tower company in Europe. However, over the past year, and particularly the past few weeks, Europe is rapidly changing into a tower market more akin to the United States. Many of the wireless carriers in Europe are either selling their tower assets to independent tower companies like Celnex, or are bringing their tower businesses public through initial public offerings, known as IPOs, in 2021. We call this phenomenon the Americanization of European Towers. So let's start with a quick review of the largest wireless carriers and independent tower companies in the United States, so that we can compare them to the European market. So first is Verizon, which is the largest wireless carrier in the United States, with 121 million subscribers. T-Mobile is the second largest wireless carrier in the United States, with 102 million subscribers. AT&T is the third largest wireless carrier in the United States, with 95 million subscribers and Dish Network is the fourth largest wireless carrier in the United States with 9.4 million subscribers. Note that the majority of Dish's subscribers are prepaid customers under the Boost Mobile brand. Now let's move to the largest independent tower companies in the United States. Number one is American Tower, who owns 40,600 towers in the United States. Number two is Crown Castle, that owns 40,100 towers in the United States. Number three is SBA Communications, which owns 16,500 towers in the United States. And fourth is Vertical Bridge, who owns 6,000 towers in the United States, which rises to 20,000 towers when including its master leased towers. Now let's move to the four largest wireless carriers and tower companies in Europe, which are in the process of becoming more independent, or as we like to call it, Americanizing. Deutsche Telekom is first, with its largest market being Germany. Notably, Deutsche Telekom is also the controlling shareholder of the United States wireless carrier, T-Mobile. Vodafone is second, with its largest markets including Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, and Spain. Telefonica is third, with its largest markets being Germany and the United Kingdom, in which it operates under the O2 brand. Additionally, Telefonica operates in its home market, Spain, under both the Telefonica and Movistar brands. Wireless carrier Orange is fourth, with its largest markets including France, Spain, and Poland. Now let's discuss this phenomenon of the Americanization of European towers, which is really characterized by how many of the wireless carriers in Europe are either selling their tower assets to independent tower companies or are bringing their tower businesses public through initial public offerings in 2021. Before jumping in, we wanted to point out that we have written extensively about all of these acquisition and initial public offering transactions on our website dgtlinfra.com. 
So if you want to learn more about any of these transactions, then check out some of the articles we show on screen as we discuss each European tower company. We will also link to the articles below. With that, let's dive into the European tower companies. Number one is Cellnex Telecom, who owns 120,000 sites pro forma for all of its acquisitions and planned build-to-suit programs, which are known as BTS programs. There have been a tremendous number of recent updates from Cellnex, three of which we'll highlight for you in this video. Firstly, in January 2021, Cellnex announced a joint venture transaction with Deutsche Telekom to add 3,200 towers in the Netherlands to its portfolio at a valuation of 645 million euros. Beyond this Netherlands transaction, Deutsche Telekom is the largest wireless carrier in Europe to have not announced any monetization plans for its tower assets. This is important as Deutsche Telekom owns 63,000 tower sites in Germany, Poland, and Austria, among other European countries, and these towers are highly sought after. Secondly, in February 2021, Cellnex announced an agreement with Altice France, a French wireless carrier, and KKR, a private equity firm, to acquire their joint venture called Hivery, which owns 10,500 towers in France for a price of 5.2 billion euros. Finally, in November 2020, Cellnex announced an agreement with CK Hutchison, a pan-European wireless carrier, to acquire 24,600 of its towers throughout Europe for 10 billion euros. This transaction included towers in Italy, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Sweden, Austria, and Denmark. Number two is Vantage Towers, which is currently part of British wireless carrier Vodafone. Vantage Towers will be the second largest European towers operator with 82,000 tower sites in 10 countries in Europe once the company separates from Vodafone through an initial public offering known as an IPO in early 2021. Specifically, Vantage Towers operates in Germany, Italy, Spain, Greece, the Czech Republic, Portugal, Romania, Hungary, Ireland, and the United Kingdom after including a 50% stake in Cornerstone Telecommunications Infrastructure Limited, known as CTIL, which is the UK's largest tower company. Number three is American Tower, which up until this year only had a relatively small portfolio of 5,000 towers in Europe. However, in January 2021, American Tower agreed to acquire Telxius Towers from Telefonica in a 7.7 .7 billion euro or 9.4 billion US dollar transaction. Telxius comprises 30,700 towers, of which 26,000 towers are in Europe. And in turn, this transaction brings American Tower's total portfolio in Europe to 31,000 towers overall. Finally, number four is Totem, which is currently part of French wireless carrier Orange. Just this past week, on February 18th, 2021, Orange announced that it is creating a tower company called Totem through a corporate carve-out. In total, Totem will own and operate 25,500 tower sites across both France and Spain. So that wraps up our overview of recent tower developments in Europe. As you can see, European towers are increasingly being separated from the wireless carriers that have traditionally owned them and are being purchased or placed into new independent tower companies through acquisition or initial public offerings. This is a very similar process that the United States went through previously over the past decade. Hence, we call it the Americanization of European towers. Again, if you want more of the behind the scenes detail and transaction rationale for any of the companies or deals mentioned, then visit us at dgtlinfra.com or check out the links in the description below. Finally, if you are detail-oriented and want the precise numbers behind all of the Tower M&A transactions globally, then we highly recommend checking out our shop section at dgtlinfra.com shop and getting the product Towers Precedent M&A Transactions. This document provides you with comprehensive details for the latest precedent M&A transactions in the tower sector across the United States, Europe, Latin America, Africa, and India. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.